Welcome to Aging Insight with your host, John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by Welcome to another edition of Aging Insight. I'm your host, John Ross, here with my partner and co-host, Lisa Schollmeyer. And we are elder law attorneys, you know, which are the type of attorneys that specialize in the needs of seniors and people with disabilities. You know, we try to address the issues that people have as they get older. Issues like avoiding institutionalized care, avoiding becoming a burden on their friends and family, and avoiding going broke in the process. You know, we want you, to, we want you to age on your terms. And we know that you can accomplish that goal. We can, you can accomplish all of those goals <laughs> with knowledge. You know, because it is a, it's, it's a hard, uh, hard to navigate path. But with a little guidance and, and answers to a few of your questions, we know you can get there. And that's what Aging Inside is all about. Well, John, that's right. And, you know, we often deal with seniors in transition. Yes. And, you know, sometimes that senior may have lost a spouse. Uh, sometimes that senior may have had a health crisis of their own. Uh, so, but a lot of times those events cause transitions, you know, not the least of which is maybe a transition in the housing situation that you're going to live in, you know, if we've been in a home for 40 years and you and your spouse, you raised your kids, you built that home, uh, but now your spouse is gone, it may be just too much for you to handle all on your own. You know, having a house is great, but it comes with a lot of ticky things like maintenance, you know, mowing the grass, uh, fixing those broken appliances. And you know, sometimes as we get into our senior years, you know, those maintenance issues are costly and you know not really as we're looking for our financial security not really where what we want to be spending our money on so uh, and of course the other issue comes in if you have a health crisis that you can't stay in that home any longer because it's maybe it's not accessible for the equipment or the way you need to move around in that home and uh, you just need to downsize so today we're going to talk about some of the challenges of downsizing and some of the things to consider before you just jump in. <laughs> well, that's, that's exactly right because this is a big decision. You know, when you're talking about moving from a, a large home to a smaller home, or maybe you're looking at moving into uh, uh, another type of living arrangement, maybe an independent living center, maybe an assisted living, um, maybe, uh, you know, any of these different options, but the, the fact is, you know, like so many of us, you have a lifetime's worth of accumulation in that house. That's right. You got stuff. You know, and really, John, one of my first things I tell folks is particularly if they've lost a spouse and they realize that maybe the home isn't where they need to be any longer. You know, the first thing I always say is, you know, economically, you know, if you can stay a little bit, you know, don't rush into anything. That's true. You know, uh, don't rush, but, you know, get a plan, get your, get your head right, and then decide where it's going to be best uh, for you. Because you know what? Sometimes living independently means that we change our housing situation so that we can navigate it and we can live independently. Maybe that's smaller areas. Uh, that kind of thing so right and you know of course when we talk about you know when we open the show and we talk about people wanting to avoid institutionalized care and age on their own terms and not be a burden on friends and family and things like that part of the part of the way to do that oftentimes is by having a living environment that you can manage yourself you know being out there alone uh, on the middle of the 40 acre farm um, just may not be uh, the right place and so 
downsizing. That's that's really kind of mm -hmm. the key. But but again, the the first problem you run into is you've got a big house full of stuff and you're moving to a place where that stuff is just not going to fit. And so the first thing you've got to look at is how do you sort through all of these things? Well, you know, first of all, don't get overwhelmed. It's so easy to look around and think there's no way we c I could ever get this down. And so it's just exhausting thinking about it. So I'm not even going to try. So once you've decided to make that downsize move and you know that you're going to have to, you know, get rid of some, some of that stuff, that accumulation, the first piece of advice, you know, don't tackle it all in one day. It's, it's not going to happen. And if you do, you're really just setting yourself up for failure. So, you know, what you need to do is maybe a couple of hours, uh, bite-sized chunks at a time. You know, pick that linen closet and pick that front bedroom and spend a couple of hours and then, you know, get about your regular schedule. Um, and that's why another reason you're going to need to give yourself a bit of time, if you can, to make that transition. Uh, but, you know, forward progress, even if it's baby steps, is still forward progress. That's right. Yeah. And so the key really is, is, you know, again, little chunks, couple of hours and maybe focus on just one room or even just one part of a room. You know, I'm going to clean out this closet today and that's all I'm going to do. And, and that can be a, that can be a great way to do it. Now, of course, as you're, as you're coming through with all of this, you know, that kind of the, the, the next thing is to figure out, you know, what's what's going to go what's going to stay and oftentimes we see that you know if uh if somebody is making this kind of move they've got a family member or somebody else who's helping them out and you know making a move like that is already stressful enough and and oftentimes thinking about well i, I don't know what to get rid of or what to keep that can be very hard for the owner of those items Whereas that person that's helping them move, you're not attached to them. And, and so a lot of times that person, that helper, can phrase questions in a way that, that make it easier to get rid of asset, uh, you know, get rid of some of the stuff. You know, so for example, instead of saying, well, uh, well hey mom, uh, which of these pots do you want to keep and, and which do you want to get rid of? You know, it's a, it would be a lot easier for that helper to just pick out the best ones and say, hey, mom, I've picked out the best ones. How about we just keep these and get rid of the rest? You know, by framing it is in more of a yes or no, that can make it a lot easier for that person who's, who's having to make all these decisions already. You know, you're doing a lot of the work by sorting for them and then just kind of saying, hey, do you want this or not? Well, and that kind of uh, uh, brings up some interesting dynamics questions if you are helping that senior downsize. So, you know, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to give you some hints to be able to kind of navigate through our emotional attachment to a lot of the stuff that we've accumulated in our lifetime. So we'll be right back. All our moments should be cherished. SEMA Hospice provides comfort care when you need it most with compassion, dignity, and respect. Along with Jordan Health Services, SEMA Hospice provides compassionate continuity of care. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. Off of McKnight Road in Texarkana, Texas, the Oaks Independent are apartments for seniors who love secure peace of mind and consistency in their lives. You're going to fall in love with this newly built luxurious residential establishment for the aging adult. All bills are included and all apartments are wheelchair accessible, inclusive with all the amenities. Live in style, comfort, and accessibility. Live independent. Call today to schedule a tour. The Oaks Independent. Hi there, I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end of life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community by the community. 
As things get older, they require more care. This car and I have seen a lot of miles together, but because I take care of her, she runs just like she did in 1955. That's why I chose the Wadley Senior Clinic with an individualized care plan designed just for me and a convenient location off Jefferson Avenue. They have everything to keep me running like new. It's not about the miles, it's about the journey. Let the Wadley Senior Clinic keep you happy, healthy, and cruising down the road of life. From our first moments to our final days, life's journey should be remembered free of burden and worry. Family should be cherished. SEMA Hospice provides comfort, care, dignity, and respect. Learn more about SEMA Hospice at SEMAHospice.com. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. Welcome back to Aging Insight. I'm Lisa Schollmeyer, and I'm here with John Ross. And, you know, today we're talking about when it's time to downsize. And, you know, a lot of times we find ourselves in a transition period and it means a change in our living situation. Uh, the problem for most of us is we're really comfortable in that home that we're living in and it might be stuffed to the gills with 40 years worth of, uh, of memories and, and uh, things that we love. So downsizing is a challenge. Now, before the break, we, we talked about maybe having a helper that can assist you with that downsizing, and that is a fabulous way to help move the process. Uh, but one of the things to also remember is, you know, if you're the helper and you're assisting that senior, a lot of times, you know, we have to use a certain amount of tact with that senior and a lot of times that senior will, will defer that decision about a particular item. So if you come to the senior with, uh, you know, two teapots and, and say, you know, which one of these you want to keep, well, hopefully that senior can just pick one, but sometimes they'll say, well, I don't know, let's put that in the maybe pile. <laughs> And you know, if you're like me, if it comes to cleaning out the maybe pile, basically in, all I've done is move the stuff out of the closet and into the maybe pile. So we really need to make an effort to not create a maybe pile and go ahead and deal with the item right then. Yeah, and this kind of goes along with, uh, you, know, I, you know, I moved around quite a bit, especially w during my service in the Marines as we've, we've moved around quite a bit. And, you know, I used to have a rule that was if, if whatever the item was was still in the box from when I moved in, you know, and I had never taken it out of that box, well, I, I didn't even need to open the box. It, it was gone. I just didn't need it. And so, you know, Pick the things that you, you know, but if they're, if they're things that have just been sitting in boxes and they haven't been looked at for, for years, um, you know, it's okay to get rid of some stuff. Well, you know, one thing that, you know, a lot of us maybe in our, in when we got married, younger marriage days, we accumulated maybe some china or some, you know, household items from parents, grandparents, things like that. You know, maybe it's appropriate to keep one place setting basically as a as a decoration and maybe you know take a photograph of that china cabinet with all that beautiful china in it and you can keep that photograph keep that place setting and go ahead and maybe give away to someone that you know will enjoy and appreciate that those household items go ahead and give it away now yeah somebody that might actually use it yeah. that's exactly right now of course when it comes to these things, oftentimes there is a lot of emotional attachment to it, um, and there might be a lot of a lot of items that that are very emotional. You know, uh, I have a, a friend that I've known since I was a child, and he he is an only child, and I'm not sure that there was a minute of his life, from the time he was born, probably up until now, <laughs> that was not photographed by his mother, and and there are boxes and walls of photo albums with all of these photos. And you know, the fact is, is that if at some point in time, his mother needed to say, move into an assisted living or something like that, there's just not gonna be enough room for all of those photos. And so, you know, when it comes to things like photographs, old newspaper clippings, um, you know, that, that seventh grade report card that's just been sitting there, 
you know, these are all these are all great memories, and you may not want to get rid of them. But luckily, technology is here to help. Uh, you know, these days, those sort of things can be scanned. Um, and there's even services, private services, where you could take a box of old photos or, or stacks of old photo albums and they will scan all of those pictures and put them onto uh, disks or, or flash drives where you've got a digital recording of them and you don't have to worry about all of those individual photos. And frankly, that might actually preserve them even better than, than the old way. Just being in the box. Well, you know, when I spoke a moment ago about if there are certain items that are sentimental, that are really a part of your family's legacy, that it might be appropriate to give those things away now as you're downsizing. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, you can make sure that the recipient of those items really gets those items. Because sometimes in transitions, you know, things can get lost. So if your spouse's, you know, World War II or Korea medals are really something special to your son or grandson, you know, maybe you should consider giving those now so they don't get lost later in other transitions. Uh, the other thing is you can really uh, enjoy the recipient's appreciation and joy in the gift. So giving certain items away as you're going through and downsizing is a really good idea. Well, and there's actually another little piece to that. You know, unfortunately, when you deal with families like we do in our practice, you, you inevitably, you, you deal with family disputes, particularly disputes that arise after that loved one has, has left us. And there's some item of personal property that's in dispute because one child says, well, mom always wanted me to have it, or, and the other child says, no, 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 mom always wanted me to have it. And, and you would probably be shocked to know the number of times that either Lisa or I have had to deal with that type of situation. And I gave a presentation recently about how to avoid family conflicts, and, and somebody asked me, said, they said, John, is there any way to guarantee that somebody won't fight over you know, some of my stuff, that, that, that it will go to the person that I want it to go to. And I said, yes, there is one way, and that's to give it to them while they're still alive, yeah. or you know, while you're still alive, while you can still give it, and so that there is no question that that's who you wanted it to go to. So there's lots of reasons to, to give it away. And again, certainly not the least of which is to watch them enjoy that and, and, and be able to experience that with them. Well, and you know, John, the, the matter of fact is, as we downsize, we really have to determine what's the really important stuff to us that we want close by versus the stuff that, you know, if we have the space, we like having it around. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, downsizing oftentimes is almost a period of, of inward reflection on what the really important things are. So, so use that this time to, to engage in that. Uh, but uh, we're about ready for our next break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about, you know, if, if we're downsizing, is it appropriate to donate items? How do we go about holding a sale of these items? And uh, how to transition and move into our new space. So we'll be right back. With my dad, it was in a hospital setting. Um, and in his situation, he fell into renal failure. He also helped us make the decision to be on hospice. I have to admit, it took a, a huge weight off our shoulders for him to be willing. That offered us a lot of comfort, along with the hospice company itself, but it, it gave us closure and it helped us through the entire process. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. Hi, I'm John Ross, elder law attorney and board member for the Alzheimer's Alliance, and welcome to Our Place. Our Place is a day program designed to provide rest and relief for the caregivers of people with Alzheimer's and related dementias. Our Place is a safe environment where our friends benefit from socialization in a home-like environment. Alzheimer's is devastating and affects over 17,000 families in our area. To find out how Our Place can benefit you, please visit our website. As things get older, they require more care. This car and I have seen a lot of miles together. 
but because I take care of her, she runs just like she did in 1955. That's why I chose the Wadley Senior Clinic with an individualized care plan designed just for me and a convenient location off Jefferson Avenue. They have everything to keep me running like new. It's not about the miles, it's about the journey. Let the Wadley Senior Clinic keep you happy, healthy, and cruising down the road of life. Welcome back to Aging Inside, everybody. I'm your host, John Ross, here with Lisa Schollmeyer. And today we're talking about downsizing. You know, this is just one of those things that we see very often in our practice because people are coming to us to get advice because something has happened in their life. Maybe they've lost a, a loved one. Maybe there's been a change in the health circumstances. But for whatever reason, they're, they're contemplating a move from maybe their, their old big home to a smaller home maybe from their home to an assisted living or, or an independent living environment. But inevitably, it involves going from big to small. And, and that means finding a place for your stuff and figuring out what to keep and what not to keep and, and you know, how to deal with the, the treasures. All of those things are, are important, but you know, ultimately, as you kind of get down to the wire, you've figured out what you're gonna keep, maybe you've you've taken uh, care of the, the heirlooms, you've given those away, or you've taken pictures, as Lisa suggested, or, or scanned all of those photo albums. So you've done all of that, but we still have lots of stuff. So what do you do here at the end? You know, what, what do I do? Do I, do I donate it? Do I, do I just throw it away? What do I do with it? Well, you know, one of my favorite suggestions is, uh, you know, to ha go ahead and have that sale, whether it's a garage sale, a state sale, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, for the senior, this can be very overwhelming. If you've already sorted through your items and you've decided what you're keeping and then you know the other items, you know, need to go, you know, if you get involved in pricing and conducting that sale, then a lot of times that's just going through those items a second time. So I really like to suggest to families that they bring in someone who's a professional or someone who offers this type service. They will price the items, set up the items, and man the sale. And you know, yes, there's a fee that accompanies that service, but you know, to not have to deal with those items a second and third time, a lot of times it's just invaluable. And frankly, you know, sometimes our energy level and, and health just really can't stand up to the work it really takes to have one of those type of sales. So that's, that's really tip number one is, is get some professional help. Now, once you've had that sale, you're probably gonna have some things left over. Um, you know, if anything's broken or chipped or just obsolete, uh, and this is where you either can try the, you know, free to a good home and you'll be amazed at the kind of uh, how fast your stuff goes if it's out by, <laughs> near the curb and it's free. Um, and then of course you can always um, uh, donate it to a charity or, you know, at the last resort, you know, um, take it to the landfill for it to be disposed of. That's right. Now, of course, uh, if you do have items that maybe uh, could be of use to somebody, maybe they're, they're clothes that are in good shape or maybe they're personal items, there are certainly lots of charities out there that would be more than happy to get those things. They can either turn around and give them to needy families or, or they can sell them and use the proceeds uh, for their charitable purposes, all of which are very good. You can oftentimes get a tax deduction for making those charitable gifts. But again, you want, when you're thinking about charities, give them the things that, 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 were, that are gonna benefit either their mission or that they can sell and, and do something with. You know, if it's junk, throw it away. Um, it doesn't do the charity any good. It just makes their work harder having to sort through all of that. So if you, if you, do, uh, if you do wanna give some stuff to charity, Give some good stuff. That's uh, that's really a, a a good thing to do out there. Can be very valuable. Um, well, and you know, also as you're transitioning to your new space, remember to keep that in mind as you downsize. You know, the bottom line is, if you've been the cook for the family for decades and you've always set up the Thanksgiving spread and you know had three cakes on cake platters and turkey roasts roasters and things 
you know, in your new space, you're just simply not going to have the room to store cake platters and turkey roasters and such. And so keep that in mind as you're downsizing. And you know, frankly, hey John, how about giving that daughter-in-law those cake platters and the turkey <laughs> roaster and sell, tell her that she's in charge of Thanksgiving dinner this year? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so uh, so think about it. You know, th these things don't have to, to go completely to waste. Um, yeah. Just, uh, you know, you can give them away appropriately. You can get a tax deduction if you give them to charity. You know, some of these charities will even come and pick this stuff up for you if it's, uh, you know, if it's stuff of value. Um, and of course, there are professional services out there where uh, you can hire people that will come in and, and sort through that sort of stuff or can give you advice. Um, oftentimes, real estate agents um, can either help with this or they can, uh, they can refer you to somebody who can. And you know, finally, you may find that you have some items in your possession that may have belonged to your grandparent or great grandparent. And you know, these items really can have some historical value. So if you have some things around like that, some old farm tools or implements or you know, household uh, items, you know, also check with the uh, historical society and, and your local museum because you know, those items really tell a story about what it was like for those generations that came before us and how they live their everyday life. So keep that in mind also. That's right. Well, downsizing is a, uh, it's a fact of life. It, it happens to a lot of people. Um, it, it can be a great thing. In fact, it can be the key to aging on your own terms because uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen folks who had to leave the, the home that they were comfortable in, going to a place that they weren't as comfortable but only because they just couldn't care for that home. So, you know, while you're able, getting a home environment that you like, that you're comfortable with, and that you can maintain from here on out can really be one of the keys. In doing that, you're gonna have to downsize, and, and I hope this advice uh, can, can help you through that process. Of course, if you have other questions, you can always call in to our live radio show every Saturday on 107.1. And you can reach out to us on the internet at aginginsight.com. So we'll, we'll see, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this week's Aging Insight program with John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by 